All right, here are topic eight, evolution regions review questions. Let's look at number one. Finches on the Galapagos Islands express a variety of traits. Variability in the offspring of these finches is a result of. So notice twice it mentions variety. Variety is talking about differences in a population. Remember, when you're going through the test, you want to take your time, find out what the keywords are, underline. So what is going to create variety? There are three factors, meiosis, sexual reproduction, and then mutation. So the best answer choice here is going to be three. Remember, meiosis is talking about the production of gametes or sex cells. We always said that's so kind of that E. And a mutation is a change in the genes, in the genetic code, those A, T, Cs, and Gs. Even just one letter can have a big impact. If you're looking at your other choices, one is says cloning. Remember, cloning is making an exact copy, so there's not going to be a lot of variety there. Two has mitosis and asexual. Both make exact copies as well. And finally, number four says mitosis. Mitosis is again going to make an exact copy. Looking at number two, it says scientists recently discovered that three different types of squid, a marine animal, previously thought to be three different species, were actually all members of one species. Their earlier ideas were based on using squid carcasses or dead bodies. The new, more accepted classification is most probably based on the analysis of. So here, they were looking at structural evidence. That means physical characteristics. Remember, another type of evidence is going to be molecular evidence. Molecular evidence is referring to chemical evidence, such as DNA, proteins, and different types of chemicals that might be made. The best answer for that, then, is going to be four. Again, remember, molecular evidence refers to things like protein production and also to DNA. The diagram below represents evolutionary pathways of seven groups of organisms alive today. Which two living species would be expected to have the most similar proteins? Now, if you have the most similar proteins, you most likely have the most similar DNA. Because remember, DNA codes for your proteins. Here it says living. Because of that, what we want to make sure we know is living are going to be the ones that are here in present day. We don't want to look at the ones that are currently extinct. So anyone that doesn't make it to present day is going to be extinct. The best answer choice here is E and F. Note E and F are both alive here. They also have the most recent common ancestor. A and C are on different branches. So while they do have a common ancestor, it's not recent. B and C, also different branches. If you go back, you have to go back two intersections. So not that common, uh, well it is common, but it's not recent. H and M, you only have to go back one, but note they're both extinct. They haven't made it to present day. Which population in the chart to the right has the best chance of survival in a rapidly changing environment? Remember, if it's a rapidly changing environment, that means that there is going to be evolution. And key things for evolution is that you want to have a lot of diversity or variety in a population. So let's go through the list. Type of reproduction. We've got sexual or asexual. Asexual is going to make clones and they're all gonna have the same exact genetic information. Because of that, I can cross off two and I cross off four. And then it says average lifespan, 13 days or 12 weeks. Well, 13 days means that they're only alive for a very, very short period of time, meaning that their reproduction is occurring very quickly. So that might be the better one. Let's look at the next one. Total number of offspring produced, 100 compared to 25. 100 is a lot of offspring, meaning there's a greater likelihood that some of them are going to have mutations that may or may not be beneficial. The best answer choice for this is going to be one. So you have sexual reproduction, making variety, short lifespan, which means quick turnover of those traits, easy to select which one's going to be a the most beneficial trait and which one's going to be the least beneficial trait and then a lot of offspring are produced. As a result of habitat destruction, the size of the Florida panther population has drastically been reduced. It is estimated that there are only 100 to 160 Florida panthers in the wild, which statement best explains why the Florida panther population 
may not continue to evolve. So note here, the population size is very, very small. That means that most likely there is not a lot of variety left because they keep mating right, with individuals who have very, very similar DNA. The best answer choice for that then is going to be four. They lack genetic variation. Again, meaning that they all have very, very similar DNA. So the best answer choice there is going to be four. During the lab activity, the beaks of finches, you obtained food under two conditions, with competition and with no competition. State one way the results of these two conditions differed when you did this activity. So one you had competition, one you had less competition. When you had more competition, remember it was a lot more challenging to get food. Since it was more challenging to get food, you had less people or beak types able to survive. Once you have that, flip over. Number seven says, the theory of evolution states that. Remember, evolution is looking at change through time. Number one says, species that are extinct have no biological relationship for living species. No, every organism evolved from a common ancestor. So that's not true. Number two says, different animal species always interbreed to form new and different species. Different species, they can't breed. Remember, their genes are not similar enough, so they're not going to produce fertile offspring. Number three says species change over time, sometimes developing into new species. That could be true. The last one says the environment of Earth is constant over time. No, even in our lifespan, right, things like global temperature has gone up. So environment does not stay stable. Best answer choice there is going to be three. A shark and a dolphin have similarly shaped bodies and fins. However, these two organisms are not closely related. The shark is a fish and the dolphin is a mammal. Some species may have similar body structures even if they are not related because they evolved blank. So this is looking at a physical characteristic that is very similar, but they actually genetically are not closely related. The best answer choice for this is going to be one. Similar environments and specific traits increase their chances of survival. So having this shaped fin and this shaped body was a positive. Because of that, when they were swimming in the ocean, they were more likely to survive. When they were more likely to survive, they were more likely to pass on that trait. That does not mean, right, that they have a recent common ancestor. It just means that they had similar environmental conditions that selected for specific traits. Nine says, species excellence in a hot, dry environment. Slowly, over hundreds of years, the climate becomes wetter. Fungi attack species X and cause the population of X to decrease. However, plant species X could survive if plants. So a fungus is affecting them because it said it lived in a hot, dry environment, but over time it became wetter. Number one says try to mutate quickly and synthesize new proteins. No, remember evolution. It's not saying that because you want or need something, you can get it. You can't try to mutate, change your DNA. So that's not going to be correct. Number two says, are watered often and fertilized with extra nutrients. Well, that's not going to help species X survive. Right here it says, it's used a hot, dry environment. Watering it more is not going to positively affect it. Number three says, can adapt to the new conditions by mating with the fungus. A plant and a fungus are two different species. They're not going to be capable of mating with each other. And it also says, can adapt. You cannot adapt to something because you want to. So we're going to cross that one off. Number four says have a few, member of, few members of the population that are fungus resistant. That's going to be the best answer choice. Remember, resistant, that's a word a lot of us struggled by, struggled with. That means not killed by. That's going to be very beneficial. These ones that were resistant are then going to be able to survive and reproduce, passing on that good trait. Next up says, many domestic plants are that are currently used for food by humans share a wild plant ancestor. These changes that have occurred in four common plants and the results are shown in the chart below. What event most likely produced the changes that occurred in the wild plant ancestor? Number one says, mutations in the wild mustard 
sex cells were passed on to the offspring. So remember, a mutation is a change in the DNA. And the sex cells means that it was present in the sperm and egg. Sperm and egg make offspring. That could be true. Number two says, humans did not like to eat wild mustard. Well, that's not going to explain why these changes occurred. The wild mushroom mustard didn't change because humans didn't like it. Number three says, competition for survival occurred in all ecosystems of the world. Remember, whenever it says all, the wild mustard plant was growing in one type of specific environment. So therefore, that's not going to be true. And four says, ancient herbivores overgrazed wild mustard. No, if wild mustard was totally overgrazed, there wouldn't be a modern day plant. So the best answer choice there is going to be one.